Hello from Sketch Data. In this video, I'd like to show you how to get started using the extras features on the toolbar and do a brief intro to the version 2 catalogs. So here I have open as SketchUp Make, and I have the Sketch Data toolbar, and we can see a lot of the same functions that are available, uh, that have been available on the free toolbar and still are, but we have a new section here called Extras. And if we click on those, we can see this is a subscriber feature. So if you are a subscriber, you can go here to the information and grab your site code. I'm going to copy it because we're going to go to the website. So I'm opening up the Sketch Data website, go to the subscriber section. And over here we can see we can log in, or if you're not a subscriber, you can actually subscribe. And that'll give you your username and a password. And then you can log in and get to the member area. Here it says I'm already logged in, so I can enter the member area. And now I can download the version 2 catalogs. And I also have the ability to take that site code, and I can paste it in here, activate it. I'll get a key code, and we're going to copy that, right click and copy that back into SketchUp. Paste it into where the key code is. You can see now it says I'm using the free toolbar version. I click activate, and now it says the extra toolbar features have been activated. So now when I go back to click on here, I can get my global attributes. So that's a good place to start. Um, well, actually, first I'll draw a wall to get us started. Uh, I'm working in millimeters here, so I'm going to start with a line. Come back. We're just going to do a basic wall for us to get drop some cabinets on. So we'll make this into a group, and we will push pull it up. So now we have a wall, and of course, if with basic SketchUp commands, we can make that longer, whatever we need. But uh, so now I have a wall. I'm going to go back to my global variables or attributes. There are none here right now but I can import in a predefined set of attributes, which are a CSV file, and can be edited in any kind of spreadsheet program. So I'll hit Import. And on the desktop here, I have a CSV file called SD Global Attributes, and it's in centimeters. I'm working in metric. I'm going to select that and bring it in. And these are all the attributes that are common to the Sketch Data version 2 catalogs. We have door type and drawer type. And you can change these descriptions to whatever you like in that CSV file. It's just a text file. And let's say we want to do four for horizontal grain. And we'll do two or three for a raised panel. And we'll change our tope kick height from 150 millimeters to, to 13 centimeters or 130 millimeters. So now that's accepted. I'm going to close. I'm going to get my wall positioned. And we're also going to. Um, I like to preload the material swatches. That way, as I drop cabinets, the cabinets will uh, start taking on the material colors. And so I'm going to go to my components. And I've already downloaded and installed the Frameless Metric version 2 catalog. And there's some instructions on the website how to do that. Here are the different cabinets. We're going to go down and look for our color palettes. And the catalogs come with a default color palette for color 1, for C1, C2, C3. C4, so the catalog will respond up to four different colors in a single file. And these are just brown and white so that you can then change the colors or add JPEGs to give you the grains and or laminate colors that you want. But I've also taken those same SketchUp swatches and did a predefined set, which may be helpful if you use the same kind of color combinations over and over again. So for example, I have color palettes alder, and if we go up and look at our materials right now, there are no materials in the file. So by dragging in, let's say color 1, C1 here, you can, this is a predefined swatch that has the alder color. So I'm going to click it, and I actually don't need to place it in the model. I, once I've selected it, I don't actually have to physically put it into the drawing. It is in the model, but just not on the drawings. I hit escape, and if we go into materials, now we can see we have all these materials loaded for us. I'll go back, and I'm going to pick my second color. And we'll just do, let's say we'll find green. So 
I know color two for my secondary color in the room I want to do green so I'll click it start dragging in but I'll just hit escape so it doesn't place now if we go back to materials I can see I have all these materials that have been defined for me so let's begin dropping some cabinets so we'll go back in our browser and we'll find a base cabinet and we'll pick a let's say a base two door two door And so since I had my colors, we'll drag it up onto the wall. So I'm just doing the move commands and moving the, the cabinet around. Since I set up my global variables ahead of time, and I also set up my material swatches, when the cabinet dropped in, it took on those attributes and those materials. SketchUp will uh, automatically regen the cabinet depending on its complexity, but sometimes it won't. So let's pick a simpler cabinet and we'll drag in so in this case it didn't, but I can just simply right click, hit redraw, and now it took on those characteristics. So if I were to look and look at my toe kick, it's 130. Obviously we can see the style and rail doors. Let's pick another cabinet that we want to use. We want to do a different color with it. Let's do a base open. We want to snap it up to the... Okay, that one it didn't regen either, so I'll just right click. I'll do a redraw. There we go. No finished interior. It's still brown. But uh, we can go up and use the, the options inside SketchUp. Or there's also some on the toolbar. We can change the width. We can make it a finished interior. We can put a couple dividers in it and a couple more shelves. And now you can see it looks much different. But let's say we, now we want to make it that green, so I'll use the SketchUp version, the browser. See, we have this material group. I'm going to change it to color two. And let's also do the uh, edge shelves. So now we can see it's green. So it's using that second set of material swatches. But we don't like this toe kick to be green. We want that to be brown going across. So if I go back to my materials, I can find a material that is called, in this case it's SD2, so SD is sketch data, 2 is the color, and it's the face of the toe kick, you can see TK. So if I hit that, highlight it, I can now define a, uh, a texture for that. So I'm going to go and locate the texture I used for the alder. In this case it's just a Wilson Art laminate swatch, and I think it's the amber cherry. There we go. So now that color too, even though the cabinet's green, I want the toe kicks to be brown to continue. And so we can continue over. I can uh, copy this cabinet to the other side. And if nice thing is with the global variables, if I go back and change them, I can say, you know, the customer really wants to try to look at the vertical grain on both those, and we're going to go back to a 150 millimeter toe kick. So a nice thing about that is the, the global variables, it used to be you had to go into each component and change door styles or characteristics individually by product. But by using the version 2 catalog, it responds to global variables. So now you can see the toe kick is 150, and obviously the door style has changed. And uh, I could also make this cabinet, change it to a color 2. Obviously it's a color 2. So that's useful if I have one room where I might have the island one color and the perimeter cabinet's a different color. But uh, so, quick intro on how to get your uh, serial number and key code in there so you can start using the extra features and to use multiple colors.